Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter. I wanted to talk to you quickly about how to install the Eclipse IDE so you can start doing some Jakarta EE development. To get Eclipse is eclipse.org slash downloads. And you'll see you actually get a, a couple of different options here. It says download packages. What do you want? And there's a bunch here. There's the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. I want to do Jakarta development. So you might be tempted to click on that one, but it's actually the IDE for enterprise developers that I want. You can see there's a whole list of different things down here. PHP, JavaScript, DSL, quite a uh, plethora of different options here. But yeah, that's the one that I want. So I click x84, 64, take the download from the X Mission internet. And then in just a moment, it will be downloaded. Now I've actually downloaded this just before I started this tutorial. There it is right there. How big is it? And it's 390 megs. So it's, uh, it's hefty in size. I'm just gonna extract that file, just extract it into that current directory. After it extracts, I'm actually gonna change the name of the folder that it downloads to, to simply Eclipse. You can keep the name or the date in which it's related to there if you want, but uh, for me, I don't like doing that. No, I clicked on Tomcat there, I want the Eclipse. There's the extracted file, then you see actually Eclipse inside there. It looks like I don't have to rename anything. I'm just gonna go in there grab that Eclipse because inside Eclipse there where all the good stuff is, right? That's where the Eclipse.exe is. So I'm going to copy that folder and I like throwing my Eclipse installation into my underscore tools folder. You can see that I've got a couple of cool tools in there already, including Tomcat 10, which supports Jakarta EE servlets and also JDK 11. And you know, it's worth mentioning with JDK 11, if you want Eclipse to work, you've got to have the JDK installed. And it's not good enough just to have the JDK installed. You actually have to have Java Home configured. It doesn't hurt to have Java on the Windows path as well. So I'm going to click on edit the system environment variables there. You can see I've got the JDK installed. When I look at the environment variables here, you can see that Java Home is configured and it's configured to underscore tools slash JDK 11. It's also nice to actually have the JDK's bin directory on the path, but that's not required. Another thing you might also wanna do, just open up a command window and do the old echo percentage Java Home percentage and if that works then well you should have java installed and it looks like you've got java home configured correctly as well java version doesn't hurt either so that looks like i got everything set up now it's just a matter of allowing this to finish copying and so we got a thumbs up on that copy i've now got my underscore tools folder and then i've got eclipse sitting right in there i'll double click on eclipse you can see that eclipse.exe file and never a bad idea to maybe even just send that to the desktop so you get a nice little shortcut on the desktop there but you have to double clip so double click on eclipse.exe and you can see that opens it up 2020.09 is the version that I've got, which isn't too bad because it's the end of October right now as I'm doing this. And as it launches, it asks for a workspace. Now you can put this anywhere you want. Again, I like putting it under tools workspace. That way I know where it is. I launched the workspace and now I'm thinking I'm just going to create a quick project that can run a Java application just to prove that everything's working properly. So here it starts off, we can see the NAG screen here. I'm gonna close that window and it gives me a bunch of different options. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new, and one of my options is to create a new Java project. Do I have that option here? I can't see it. So I'm gonna click on other, go down to Java. One of my options here is to create a new Java project. I'll say, okay, click the next button. I'll just call it the test project. Take all the defaults here, look like it's defaulting to Java SE 11, which is configured with Java Home. Take all the defaults, click finish. Not gonna create a module and then just open up the Java perspective. And then in here, I've got the opportunity to add some source code. So I'll create a new Java class. I'm gonna call them.mcnz.test package. I'll call it hello world. 
add a main method in there, click finish. And then of course we have to do the compulsory system dot out dot print lawn and say hello world. And if this runs and executes and tells me hello world, then I know that, well, I've installed Eclipse properly and Java is working. And there it is right there, the result of my little hello world application. And there you go, that's how easy it is to install the Eclipse IDE. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials on Tomcat, enterprise software development, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in some of my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.